The father of missing five-year-old Harmony Montgomery was due in court today for a pretrial hearing this morning, but he refused to attend at the very last minute. Adam Montgomery faces multiple charges, including a top count of second-degree murder, all in connection to the presumed death of Harmony, which he still denies any involvement with. So um, I understand that I was found guilty by a jury and I'm not here to dispute that at all. Um, the only consideration that I ask of you this morning is for you not to consider anything as it relates to the case regarding my daughter Harmony. I did not kill my daughter Harmony and I look forward to my upcoming trial to refute those offensive claims. Of course, that was at his uh, trial for theft and sale of arms and guns, and he got 65 years there. Now, Adam's defense team wants more focus on his now estranged wife, Kayla. In a court filing, defense claims that Kayla's involvement in disposing the five-year-old's remains was downplayed by the case detective and points the finger at Kayla for actively assisting with the manipulation of Harmony's body. The trial is still on track to start with jury selection on February 6th. All right, let me bring back in my guest still with me, criminal defense attorney Jeffrey Wolf. Jeffrey, um, one of the things that the defense wants to do now um, is sever the trials. There's a, uh, uh, an assault charge um, that he's charged with hitting Harmony uh, back in July of 2019 and also the murder, which they claim happened in December of 2019. They want to sever those charges initially. The defense agreed to combine them, which I thought was a bad move at the time. Now they want to sever them. What are your thoughts on this? I think you got to sever those. I mean, what yeah. you're looking at is classic 404B evidence of prior bad acts to show action and conformity therewith, and in this case are ramping up from assault to murder. And agreeing to do those things together is never something you should do. Even if you just have two child abuse charges or two assault charges, you always wanna try and get them to go separate because it's the old where there's smoke, there's fire thing that the prosecution is able to do with the jury. If you believe this, then certainly you can believe that. A person who would hit their kid would certainly kill their kid. You have to sever them. You have to present these separately to separate juries. And the judge may not let them that not everything that you want to get severed gets severed, but to agree to it is, in my opinion, malpractice. Well, now the prosecution's arguing, you know, at this late date, you know, the judge should not allow it. The judge said he will take it under revisement, he'll have his ruling. What do you think he might do? I think the judge will probably leave them together. I think that the judge's inclination is for judicial economy to have one trial with one jury and say that we can cure all this by giving them instructions that the evidence in one is not to prejudice their ruling on the other. But I think it's I think it's the wrong decision. I just don't think you can get a fair trial when you're accused of multiple acts unless they're all tied together in one nexus of fact, which something months and months apart cannot be tied that way. It just doesn't work that way. And quite frankly, I don't care if they bring it up the morning of trial. A fair trial is a fair trial. If it's the right ruling, make it no matter when they ask. Yeah, I would have to agree with you, but I also want to ask you this aspect about this. Now, what we know is that I believe it was the uncle who says that he witnessed him sort of hit Harmony and that caused a bruise, and that's the assault that they're going to talk about. What we're also going to hear is from Kayla, who's going to say when he killed her, he reached behind, she was soiling the car, and he got tired of it, and he reached behind and hit her a couple of times. Um, in a very similar way, although this happened in a different place and in a different time, obviously. Do you think if there was a murder trial, and, and at least according to the prosecution, they think the assault trial would happen first, but in the murder trial, do you think that that first assault would be allowed in as propensity evidence based on the fact that they're similar enough? Well, I think that that'd be the argument the prosecution would make, right? That you can bring propensity evidence in and to show common plan, scheme, lack of mistake, and all the other excuses that you can bring in 404B for. Uh, so I think that's the best argument to say it would come in anyways, Judge. And if it's going to come in anyways, then we might as well do one trial. And that's usually what a judge hangs their hat on, is to say, if the 404B is coming in in the second trial anyways, there's no point in having two trials because you're going to be just as prejudiced by it either way. But the argument that defense makes is that even if that were the case, the murder is not going to come in in the assault and so you're prejudiced on the assault which then again it's this big circle suddenly prejudices you on the murder and so the cleanest way to do it is to have separate trials i don't know why judges and da's are so afraid of it if their cases are so good 
Yeah, no question. Now, we heard that uh, Adam Montgomery didn't want to go to court today, didn't show up in court. Anyone who's represented clients know uh, you get a lot of difficult clients, a lot of reasons they act the way they do. They can be sort of, you know, sporadic in the way they act. What, what is that about? And does that have any real effect on the case? I mean, I think it can certainly upset the judge. Judges don't like it when people refuse to come to court from in custody. They, it happens all the time. I mean, I've seen it with my clients, with other people's clients, where the judge just says, your client is refusing transport today, wouldn't come in, so now we're gonna deal with what we can deal with without them here. And usually, I find that the judge remembers that and talks about it at a date that's much more important, which is sentencing. Yeah, no question about it. And, and you know, again, it's the defendant's right to be there. But if he gives up that right, that that's up to him. That, that, that you know, that that uh, the train keeps running down the track. You just can't stop it at that point. All right. When we get to the murder charge, whenever that trial happens to take place, um, Kayla Montgomery, his wife, is going to be the key witness. I mean, there's evidence, but a lot of it's going to be coming from her. And they're claiming that spousal privilege comes into play, um, saying that she should not be allowed to testify about things he did, statements he made in her presence. What are your thoughts on how the, ju the judge might handle that? That's not going to fly. Spousal privilege is about things that you learn after the fact in a private marital conversation, not about committing crimes together. You know, if Bonnie and Clyde, that would have been an awesome defense. We got married and we mm -hmm. robbed the banks, but you can't use us against each other because we're married. It doesn't quite work like that. You hear it all the time. You hear people talk about it all the time. You hear people talk about, oh, I confess this to, you know, the kid's therapist because I was trying to get the kid help. Well, that therapist isn't your therapist. And it's the same thing with your wife or your husband. You can't just go out and commit crimes together and then say that you can prevent the other person from testifying. Because first of all, it's her privilege, not yours to assert. And second of all, it's not for committing crimes together. It's for having intimate conversations as part of a marriage. And it's a pretty antiquated concept that most courts aren't really going with anymore. Yeah, and, and the defense is now arguing that the prosecution is mischaracterizing the involvement of Kayla in all this it almost sounds like an admission jeffrey is the defense treading on fine lines there by making that particular argument yeah i mean you always are when you're trying to prevent a witness from testifying you're always going to kind of say hey look she wasn't actually involved this was just conversations so it is marital privilege but then you're saying well that means we did it but you're saying it to the judge and you're saying it to the DA. You're not saying it in front of a jury, so you don't have a lot to lose there if you can keep the witness out. Yeah, so essentially it's it's, it's okay to make that argument in these pretrial motions, but mm -hmm. certainly you're not going to go in that direction at trial. Not even a little bit. Yeah. Not even a little bit.